Hello. In this tutorial, I'll create an RTS player camera in C++. The player will be able to move around using the directional keys, zoom in and zoom out with the wheel mouse, rotate using keys for incremental rotation, and use the mouse wheel for free rotation. To save time, I'll be covering most of the configuration on the screen rather than typing everything out. I suggest pausing the video if you need more detail. Optionally, the entire project is available on my Patreon. Let's get started. Start a new project. You can use any project. I'm going to use the top down project because that's RTSE. And we may add some stuff to it in a later tutorial. Um, the first thing we'll do is just set up some stuff in the editor and then we'll get into the C++. So the first thing we need to do is create a uh, game mode. So we'll go into our C++ folder. We should already have a, a game mode here. We'll just create a blueprint class of that. I'm going to put it in content folder for now and I'll just call it the game mode. Good little tip here is if you go into your editor preferences and then change default to main window. When you open new windows, then they'll open at the top, not in a new window on their own. Um, we'll create our C++ class for our uh, player pawn, what our camera is going to be based off. So we'll go create a new C++ class as, and a pawn, and we'll name it. Uh, I'll call it S player pawn. Uh, I might put this, I'll just put it in the root directory as well for now. I'll be using Rider for this tutorial. There shouldn't be too many differences though if you're using Visual Studio or something else. Once that's created, we'll create a child of the C++ class, a blueprint child class. I'm just going to call that B player. And then in our game mode, we'll set the default pawn class to be that player. And we'll save that. And we'll save our player. And close that. Close that. And then we'll just set our game mode override in world settings to our new game mode blueprint class. So the last thing we can do in the editor before we have to come back uh, for testing is we can just go to our project settings and go to input and we'll set up the input bindings that we need. So these are the input bindings that you'll need here. Rotate is the middle mouse button which will enable the mouse rotation. Rotate left and rotate right is the incremental rotation left and right. Forward, you've got your forwards and backwards, with uh, backwards being the negative one. Right being the same, with left being the negative one. Our zoom will be our wheel, wheel mouse with a negative one index. So when you, rock, when you scroll down on the wheel mouse, it should zoom out. And then you've got your uh, mouse horizontal or mouse vertical on the X and Y axes. And we can save all and go to the editor and get into the C++. Alrighty, once in the editor, we're just going to do a bit of housekeeping here. So I'm just going to go into the player controller that was created by the template. And it has some uh, key bindings using the enhanced input. I'm just going to disable them because it gives us a warning error later when we're using our player camera. Don't have to do this step, but if you want to get rid of that warning error, just temporarily disable those. All we need that for, and then we'll go to our player pawn. Just going to tidy this up a bit. Don't have to do this part. Just like to keep it all together. I'm going to create a private section here, and this is where we're going to start. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our player pawn camera. So we're going to need a scene component, spring arm, and a camera. So they're the components. So I've got the allow private access because I've put them in the private area and they only need to be visible to the editor. So once you have those variables in we'll then go to the constructor 
and we'll start setting those up. So we've got our scene component, which is going to be our root component. And then we've got our spring arm, which will control uh, where our camera sits. So we'll use the spring arm length to control zoom. And we're just setting up the attachment to the root component. And then likewise, the camera is attached to the spring arm. And we're just setting some default settings here. You can put them to whatever you like. Disabling collision testing on the spring arm so we don't have weird collisions when we're moving around if we've got things in the world. And the camera component is just attached to the spring arm. Now we can go back to the .h file and we're going to set up the camera variables. So these would be the variables that you set to set your camera parameters and how you want it to behave. Uh, we'll make these protected. So we're going to, we've got our move speed, rotate speed, rotate pitch, min and max. And uh, we've got a min zoom and a max zoom and a zoom speed. I just need to make sure that these are rewrite at anywhere so they can be adjusted in the blueprint. Uh, the category just is just what menu it's going to come up in so you can find it easy enough. Uh, I've got some, some variables in there. That's just what I've used. So it's going to depend on what game you want and the sort of feel you want. Rotate pitch minimum maximum is what stops the camera from flipping over so like you can't go below 10 degrees sort of pitch angle so you can't go into the floor and you can't go over 90 degrees or over the top which will we'll clamp that later so the other variables we're going to need are just going to be private ones are going to be what we use to calculate our target position rotation and zoom so it's what we're going to sort of blend to when we move the camera i'm going to make these private because they don't need to be accessed in blueprints so we've got a target location, target rotation, target zoom, and a can rotate is what we'll use to control when you press the middle mouse button. You can then use the mouse to uh, move to rotate the camera while you're holding the middle mouse button. So now we'll set up the functions that are going to handle the behavior from the key inputs. There's going to be a few of those because we need one for every key binding that we've got. Some, some of them two for one key. So we've got forward, right, zoom, rotate, right, rotate, left. It just all looks for me to the to the key input settings that we put in. And then we've got enable rotate and disable rotate, which will connect to the rotate keybind. And then we've got the rotate horizontal and rotate vertical, which is gonna connect up to our mouse X and Y. So we'll just build all those across into our PP file. And the reason why some of these don't have the float values because they're an action binding. So the axes bindings pass a float, which is the axes amount, and the action bindings, they're just the normal function. You will need the U function on there because we're about to bind the inputs and the bind input will need the U function to look up the function. So we're gonna go to our setup player input component and add our input bindings here. So here's our input bindings. We've got forward, right, zoom. And we're, bu we're binding them to this object and to the functions that we just created. And there are all the axes bindings. And then for the action bindings, we need to bind the key event. So we're binding to the key is pressed. So right rotate would be E. So we're binding to E is pressed to this object to execute that rotate right function. And then for the rotate, we're binding to the middle mouse button pressed on this object to enable rotation. And then when the middle mouse button's released, we're disabling rotation. So now we need to make these functions do something. And we might as well start with forward. Actually, what we'll do, so, since it's going to be the same in all all of the uh, axes functions, we, we just want to check that the axes values is zero. So if axes value is equal to zero, then we just want to return. We don't want it to do anything if there's no input. like that and then back to forward so for forward we want to set our target location so we're going to get the target location from our spring arm component and we we get its forward vector because even when we rotate around we want to get the forward position of the spring arm no matter which direction it's facing we want to move forward in that facing direction otherwise when you turn like rotate the camera it'll still go in the original forward direction and we're just going to add the axes value that we're so that's it's going to be a one basically that we're because we've pressed the 
axes on full and then we're going to combine it with our move speed and the previous target location that we had so it's adding to the target position as, as you hold the key down and right is almost exactly the same except we are adding the right vector so the axis value would be negative one for left same with, with the forward it'd be negative one for backward and um, we're continuously adding that to the target location now for zoom zoom's a little bit different we're just going to create a, a zoom value here and this fixed number here you can make this a variable and it'll basically control how much the zoom changes per tick of the wheel mouse so if you want to zoom it up a bit so you go faster or have finer control you can adjust this number here or make it a variable and be able to adjust it inside the editor so what that's going to do is just each tick of the wheel mouse is going to add to our target zoom and we're just clamping it so you can't go past the max or minimum zoom that we've set now for rotation right and left they're pretty much identical except we're we're rotating on on the yaw in the opposite direction and you can change this number or have it configurable as well but that's i've set it to 45 degree rotations each time you press the key you know you could have it much finer 10 or you could have it a full 180 turn if you wanted it to i'm using the kismet math library to create the rotator there so you can just include that in your uh, project now the enable and disable rotates pretty Pretty simple, we're just going to set it to true. We're just going to set it to false on the key press and the key release. For the horizontal movement, we first want to check that we can rotate. So we've, we're holding the middle mouse button and then it's a similar setup to the normal rotation. We're going to create a rotator, except we're passing in for the horizontal, we're passing in the yaw and, and calculating a, a yaw using the axis value. So how much we've moved the mouse. And again, you could multiply this by a variable or just a fixed number to increase the amount that you rotate when you move the mouse. And rotate vertical is exactly the same, except we're rotating the pitch here. And again, you could add that variable to that if you wanted to increase the amount. So now, now that we've got all the functions in and we've got these uh, variables being set with something, we want to actually set our initial settings in begin play. When we start the game, we're in the right position. So we just want to set our target location to our player's current location. So if we've used a player start position, that will be that player start position. We're setting our target zoom. And if you set this target zoom to something different than the spring arm length that you've set, it'll actually move as the game starts. It'll move to that zoom level. For the rotation, we want to add an angle to the spring arm when the game starts otherwise the camera will be laying on the ground and you'll have to you know angle up the rotation so what we're doing here is i'm adding a negative 50 pitch to the current rotation just to get that up in the air and then i'm we're just adding the normal or the, the current yaw of the spring arm and then the uh we're, we're zeroing out the roll because we don't want any roll so now, now that these are set on the beginning of of play we need to set these up when the game actually starts Ticking along, we want to be able to set these as we hold a key and change the uh, change the position as we go. So to do that smoothly, we're going to use interpolation. So I'm using for the position, we're using V interp, and we're going to interp the position from the current actor's position to our target location, and using our move speed as as the amount each each tick that we're going to move, and we're just setting that position, that interpolated position. And we're going to do the, the same thing for the, the spring arm for the zoom. So we're just using a float interp here and then we're getting the current length. We're going towards that target zoom. The amount of time each tick, we're doing it at that speed and then we're getting that interpolated amount towards our target and moving there. And then pretty much the same, same for the rotation. We're using a R interp for a rotation interpolation, getting the current rotation, going towards our target rotation at our rotation speed. And then we're setting that spring arm to that interpolated rotation. So basically what each tick, it's doing a finite movement based on how much delta time has passed. Now the only thing we have left to do is add another function, which can just be a private function. We need, we need to clamp the, the pitch and the position. So for the camera bounds, we just want to bound the pitch so we can't, pitch up over ourselves and end up upside down. It's, it stopped us getting the, the whole camera upside down and all over the place. And then we just need to set that to our target rotation, that, that new pitch and zero out the roll again. And then 
we're just clamping our target location, taking out any Z, which is height. We want the camera moving up and down. We want the zoom to go in and out, not the camera itself to physically go up and down. So that's what that's doing out there or keeping it within the bounds. And then this function, we just need to add that to our tick. So that's called each time and locks it in. Now with that done, we should be right to build the project and test it out in the editor. So once you're in the editor, just confirm that you've got that game mode override for the, the test map that you're using and, and, the, and the game mode has the player selected. When you press play, you should spawn into your pawn and be at that negative 50 angle or whatever you put in there. You might need to click in the screen for it to be moving. We should be able to move forward, back, left, right, zoom in and zoom out. Uh, we can rotate in increments, so those 45 increments both ways. And we can hold the middle mouse button to zoom around, ro rotate around all directions. So up, down, and left, right. And that is our RTS player camera. Please don't forget to like if you found this tutorial helpful and subscribe so you don't miss out on future tutorials. You can join me on Discord or sign up to my Patreon where you can get access to all my tutorials early and the project files, as well as gain access to behind the scenes on my current game development. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching. See you next time.